Yo, so check out this dubstop video from 10 years ago. So I've been interested in finger drumming for about 10 years and I'll show you exactly how I know that in a minute. But you'd think by now I'd be pretty good at the art form, right? 10 years is a long time by anyone's standard. But unfortunately, I'm not. I'm still pretty bad. Well, luckily in the last few months I've started to make progress again. So what exactly has changed? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what's finally clicked for me. I'm gonna talk about equipment, patterns, samples, some practice tips and some of my favorite artists to check out at the moment. But first, let me show you how I know I've been into this for 10 years. Who's that? Cy Hargreaves, 10 years ago. I want his drums, I swear none of my kits on machine that sound like that. So yeah, guys, don't be like me and go 10 years without getting any better. Listen to this information in this video and let's go. So this is the bit of kit I was using 10 years ago. It is the Machine Mark One, and I think it's probably the same one that that Justin Aswell guy was using. And so it's obviously a decent bit of kit. And when I play with it now, it doesn't actually feel too bad. But what I didn't like about it was setting it up was a real pain in the ass, unless you had it set up constantly, which I couldn't do at the time, because you have this MIDI controller, which goes to a laptop, which then goes to a sound card, which then goes to your speakers, and it's just a real pain in the bum, and there's lots of ways for that to go wrong. So what am I using now, which is really good, <laughs> and it's no surprise that this bit of kit is good, but it's literally a game changer for me, at least. Yes, my MPC Live 2. This is like the best thing that I've bought in a while. Um, yeah, and I buy a lot of kit and often I'm just quite disappointed with it, but this thing is literally mwah. So the main thing that I love about this is that it's so portable. I mean, it's got a speaker on the front and it's literally just like one unit. It almost feels like an instrument. Um, so the way I like to use it is I just have it like very nearby. And when I'm on my living room sofa, I just pick it up and just start to finger drum essentially. And having that little tiny difference is huge because it's all about like re removing resistance. I just pick it up and I can go. So around three or four years ago, I did a video on melodics and around that time I'd been practicing on it for a few months quite regularly. And I think it did help me get some of like the, the muscle memory down. But what I've realized now is since practicing without it is the information just isn't as sticky on melodics. You might be learning a house beat one moment, then you might be learning a trap beat, then you might be learning a hip hop beat. That's obviously a good thing. It's good to be diverse and learn different ways because different patterns unlock different techniques. But when you're dotting around and changing every single time, it would be essentially like learning the drums, except every time you sat down to the drums, all the drums are in different places. So it's really not that conducive, I think, to like really building like a solid muscle memory. Now, also bear in mind that I haven't been on Melodic since back then, so I'm probably due to revisit and maybe do an updated review. But, you know, if stuff hasn't changed drastically, I can still foresee that being a problem. But yeah, let me know in the comments if that is now taken care of. Um, I don't know how that would be, but yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. I've essentially decided to stick to one setup, which is the same setup as Beats by Jay Black. The guy's an amazing finger drummer. So the setup is like this kick and snare, pretty normal for finger drumming. And then he likes to have two hi-hats here, one loud one and one quiet one here. And you go from, you start with this one and then go to this one, which can be quite different because some people have two hi-hats and actually start with this one and that one. And that's something that I kept messing up on on melodics. I remember back in the time, those kept switching and every time I'd do it, I'd be like, oh, which way is it? Whereas now I've decided to stick to one, it just it's just automatic. Put your samples and loops up here and then yeah keep these ones for all the drums and then your perk and all that kind of perk percussion <laughs> on top of that i decided to do j black's course which was 240 bucks which yeah that could sound like a lot um in retrospect in fact how many years worth of melodics is that Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so that's like three years worth of melodics, which in retrospect does sound like a lot, but I don't actually regret it because I got some questions answered by doing that course that I just didn't with melodics. The main thing being how to actually set up your pads, how to cut things up, put the levels right. There was a bit more on counting beats and bars with him. And then I learned some cool patterns like. And if you wanna to learn to do that, check out Beats by J Black's course. There's plenty of other people to learn from now, which, you know, 10 years ago, there just really wasn't that much information on how to finger drum, to be honest. Now you've got people like Gnarly Music, I think she's got a course, and then there's loads of other practitioners here you can check out. Let me just check out my list because I did some research on this. Quest for Groove, Dragon Finger Drums, uh, Liam Kellen, he's got a cool thing on YouTube. And then obviously, if you just want inspiration, you've got the, the OG, Jeremy Ellis. Fred again is now finger drumming, which is pretty excellent for um, some cool inspo. He's absolutely smashing it. Uh, Lax the Monk, and you've also got like the finger drumming world championships, which obviously gets a lot of amazing finger drummers in there and smashing it. Hey guys, so I don't know if you noticed throughout this video that I've had a lovely new desk behind me, which was sent to me by my good friends at FlexiSpot. This is their latest model. It's their next generation desk. It's got a weight capacity of 160 kilograms, which is the best overall payload for a two leg standing desk. Its lifting speed is 40 millimeters per second, which is faster than both the E7 and the E8. It has a C leg design, which is more stable. It's got magnetic concealed cable management, which is really easy to install and under the desk cable management, which is super clean and convenient. Now I know that sounded really addy, but honestly, this is an amazing desk. When I put it together, I was actually amazed how beefy it was. I imagine if you're DJs and stuff like that, you you could probably do with something like this because we all know that you can get like the, the hunched over back. And yeah, it's just, um, wow, great desk. Thank you, Flexispot. Anyway, so let me show you my next favorite thing on the MPC Live, which doesn't seem like a big thing, but um, when you've dealt with audio issues, going through an audio interface and feedback delay and all that kind of stuff, this is an amazing feature. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Just go to sampler and then where this says off, turn that to in and that allows you to hear your in. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't say this is rock type, but that's a big deal because it's now you can just hear it and I can play music here. So let's play, play some K, 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 K Trinada. And yeah, now I can just play along to it. So that's it, it's a simple trick, but like that's actually really hard to do sometimes when you've got only one audio interface and you're trying to play music from the computer and everything, it's just, it just simplifies all that stuff and it's just like, great. You can play all your favorite songs and drum along to them. Yeah, learn all sorts of crazy patterns that way. Hope that makes sense and it's not too simple, but it's something that's really, I found useful. Okay, so the final thing I wanna talk about is finding samples. Let's go back 10 years and what was I doing back then? You know, I was sampling from like, Vinyl, obviously, um, obvious place to go, but that's not the easiest. Uh, YouTube, and I guess to put this in perspective, 10 years ago was when Splice just started, but a lot of the stuff on there isn't necessarily geared towards finger drumming, and there are some services out there now, which I'm gonna share in a moment, which are essentially, they, you know, they, they focus purely on loops, especially, and they're made for sampling, it. and it's just much better these days. Like, there's things like Tracklib, um, that's obviously a really good one because you can legally sample things. Um, my other favorite one that I like at the moment is wavs.com because uh, they have, they're focused solely on loops and you can just sample in the tune and then put your own drums underneath it and you get these big long sequences that you can chop up and it's just really handy for finger drumming. The last favorite one I want to share is called samplet.io and it essentially allows you to filter on YouTube and put in lots of these different criteria and it will throw back what you're looking for. So say you wanted to search for like 70s and 80s funk, you could do that and then it would like sift through all YouTube and throw back what you're after. Obviously you're not always going to get um, wide open samples for chopping up but it's an amazing resource for finding new stuff. Anyway, that's it for the video. I know it's been a bit wandering all over here and there, but um, it's something new and I'm trying to introduce some new elements to the channel because uh, yeah, just for, you know, for fun really. It keeps me, keeps everything fresh and it means that I keep uploading. So let me know if you want to see more of this stuff. I know I'm not the greatest finger drummer yet, but um, 
you know, if you want to see more like adventures with my NPC, let me know. That'd be great. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're into turntablism and all that kind of stuff, make sure you check out my last video, which was about is the turntable an instrument? Um, if you've not seen it, please check it out. I spent a lot of time on that one. And yeah, I wish it had a few more views than it's got. Peace out, guys. See you later.